So why uh, why is organic chemistry the study of carbon? Well, one of the reasons is um, because carbon forms more compounds than any other element. And uh, so far, there's about uh, over 10 million compounds listed. So, <clears throat> in terms of living things, this element makes up about 20% of all life on the planet. And it's actually just second uh, after oxygen, which is about 65%. Um, good examples are uh, backbone of DNA, proteins, and uh, other biological molecules. So. Uh, really kind of like a skeleton of biochemistry, right? In terms of, uh, again, providing a um, foundation or backbone to all different types of uh, biological compounds. And uh, why does carbon have a, such a rich chemistry? Well, perhaps because it can make uh, four bonds, right? It's a group four uh, element from the periodic table. And uh, since it's kind of in the middle in terms of uh, forming an octet, uh, half of eight is four. Uh, it probably uh, has more of a uh, richer chemistry than just plain old oxygen because uh, with carbon, you can make uh, both polar and nonpolar bonds. Oxygen, you can't really do that because it's too electronegative. It's, uh, it's primarily a, a polar type of uh, element. In other words, it makes polar bonds. And th this, this can have a pretty strong effect when you're talking about the different types of uh, chemistry that you need to form biological molecules, for example. Uh, if you take a cell membrane, um, one of the ways it's able to protect the cell because of, if you study your biology, it's made up of a uh, phospholipid bilayer, right? One end is polar, one end is uh, nonpolar. And uh, that's because of carbon, right? So that would be the inside, the more nonpolar part, the outside. And it only allows certain uh, things in, good things that it needs, right? So, with that, we get um, some things like alkanes, which is just a single bond, carbon to another carbon. And, uh, Alkane are, alkanes aren't really reactive. Um, alkenes are a little more reactive uh, in that this double bond can provide a source of electrons. But how do we get carbon to react? form all this, uh, all this rich diversity of uh, biological macromolecules. Well, <clears throat> nature has provided a special type of carbon bond 
and it just so happens it's bonded to the most common uh, element in biology, which is carbonyl. Or I should say uh, oxygen, which forms C double bondo, which is the carbonyl. Those are all like this. And uh, the, the carbon, uh, which has two other bonds remaining after the double bond, um, can, can bond to a wide variety of uh, elements, which we'll talk about in a sec. But why is carbonyl so important and you find it everywhere? Well, it's because it makes the carbon more reactive. more so than if it were with another carbon and a double bond like an alkene or an alkane. So this is uh, pretty critical uh, to get carbon to react with uh, other things um, in nature. Why is it more reactive? Well, it's because the strong electronegativity Of the oxygen. So what you have here is uh, oxygen's pretty electronegative about 3.44. I think second only after fluorine, the most electronegative element. And then if it's bonded to the carbon, carbon's only 2.55. So what's going to happen is you're going to get a pulling of the electron density of the uh, area surrounding the carbon towards the oxygen, making this electron density a little bit more negative than it normally would be. If it was just uh, oxygen uh, maybe bonded to something else or by itself. And uh, since there's a double bond here that's going to be pulled up towards the oxygen, carbon's going to be left uh, with a little bit of electron cloud deficit. So since electrons are negatively charged, it's going to be delta plus. Delta just uh, it's a Greek letter. It's a small Greek letter meaning small change. However, it's enough to make this carbon here uh, a little bit more um, electrophilic. That's one L and um, more reactive, which is the whole point. So let's take a look at some of these, um, some of these groups that we find in organic chemistry. Let's say R is any uh, carbon uh, containing a chain or a moiety. First thing we have are alcohols. Next we have uh, ethers. Alcohol is just a uh, some carbon group uh, with an OH attached to it. Ether is going to be a carbon group and another carbon group with uh, oxygen in between. And if we list the groups containing carbonyl, we first find an aldehyde which is just a carbon group, carbonyl with just an H, which is the uh, simplest form of carbonyl. Next we have a ketone, which is a carbon group, a carbon group with a carbonyl in between. It's a carboxylic acid. And um, this is a uh, kind of like a combination carbonyl with a uh, alcohol. So it's C double bond O H. Next we have an ester, which is kind of like a carboxylic acid, but take away the H and put another carbon group. Um, you have an ester. And I 
have an amide, which is a uh, NH2 attached to the carbonyl. Another nitrogen group. It's kind of like an amide without the carbonyl is an amine. And that's a towel. Which would be formed uh, originally from a uh, aldehyde um, with an excessive alcohol and an acid, which we'll talk about in a minute. And uh, if we had that same reaction taking place with a ketone from an uh, carbonyl group, you get something like this. It's going to be a ketal. These little slashes just mean that this R group is different from that R group, and so on. So in the ketal, we have three different R groups, acetal only two. <clears throat> 